Hi, I'm Annie of Annie's Way again. As I had promised earlier in my podcast, a few podcasts ago, I talked about helping parents so they can help their children, but not just helping you to help your children, but to refresh you. Uh, sometimes, since we've been out of school for so long, we've just about forgotten some things, and we have to be able to recall the basics in order to go forward. And uh, I find fraction is something that we tend to forget, but remember with fractions that it's just what it says, a part of something. Uh, fraction is all, always a part. Like for instance, we have this sheet of paper. This is a whole sheet of paper. So if we're going to show this, we would show it as one. One whole sheet of paper, okay? Or we could say, uh, another way of saying one is saying two over two or four over four. All that saying is that you've taken this one and now it's divided into two. Okay? So, one part of this would be one half. Okay? There's your one half. Two part would be two halves or two over two. Uh, you could change the shape or the parts of this paper, but you would not be changing the paper if you folded it into uh, four parts. There's your Just in case somebody's not following me. Uh, if you fold the paper another time, now you have four parts. Okay? You've got one, two, three, four. Or four over four. Well, so that's saying that each part that the, the bottom represents the whole. The four represents that this one piece of paper or one thing divided into four parts. Or four over four equals one. Two over two, one. Now, you can take that same sheet of paper I've shown the whole, I've shown half, I'm showing one fourth. Okay. If I fold this paper one more time, it's not changing the whole, it just changing it into parts. So, now I have folded another time. That means that now we have the one sheet of paper, but that one sheet of paper now represents eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, we have 8 over 8 equals 1. Same sheet of paper, just divided into more parts. It's like if you're having a party for your children, and maybe you want to buy uh, cake and ice cream. And you might not want to fill them up with some of the sweets. So you might want to cut your cake into smaller slices. Well, I could go even smaller than that. What if I divide it again? That's what fraction is all about. If you learn to master sets, 
and you master a division, you can just go higher. So now, I've folded the paper again. I'm going to put 16 on here because that is 1 16th. Okay. I'm going to show you 16 parts. You have, and I'm going to do, to do a review one day because if I had a, a you have a magic, I need a magic marker that it could really uh, highlight that. Um, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So, as you're working, trying to rediscover fraction or trying to help your children, uh, I, I, I always enjoy this because I remember when I went to school, for some reason, math uh, frightened a lot of us, but it's not, we don't need to be frightened about math. It's practical. We use math every day. We need math, but and math is relevant. We just have to be able to see it. And one thing about math, you can prove math. You can prove math. It's scientific. Uh, like here, I've shown you that we have one sheet of paper, 16 parts. Like if you baked a cake and you want to cut it into 16 slices, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So, we have 16 parts to that. We have 16 over 16 equals one whole. And I used to get a kick out. I, I taught uh, some remedial math <clears throat> in elementary school. And I remember the, the kids used to love to have me come by. And even the teachers would ask me to uh, introduce fractions to their kids. And I never thought that they would come back. Somebody would ask me to introduce anything, especially to do with math. But uh, you just have to shake, you know, I guess you get older and you shake off the fear. Well, anyway, so we have 16 parts now. What if I fold that paper one more time? Fold one more time. I'll have 32 pieces. Now we have 32 pieces. But we still have just one sheet of paper. So how do we do that? Remember, 1 16th equals 2 over 32. Because you're taking each of these, each piece now, we have 16 pieces, and if, if I cut it one more time, I can have me 32 pieces or 32 slices. Okay. I can have 32 slices, so... Uh, what it, what it is is that we're talking the whole piece, and then we divided it into half. That's my half. Then I divide it into fourths. That will be a fourth. And then I took the fourth and I divide it into eighths. That will be eight. Then if I divide that again, that will be sixteenths. So, uh, it's just, and it's like I told you earlier in my podcast about sets. If, uh, what I used to like to do is, I had a lot of beads. 
somebody gave me a bag of beads. And my children used to love to throw those beads out on the floor. And I would tell them, well, let's see how many sets we can get. How many sets of four can we get? How many sets of threes or fives? Okay, so if I'm going to divide these into sets, let me see how many I get out of this. Oops. That's one set right there. And here's another set. So I have gotten three sets. Now, if I didn't, I didn't cheat, but I shouldn't have added that other. Let's try something else. We want to get some sets of five. Now we're going to have sets of five. Let's see how many sets of five can I get out of here. I have one. Yeah, that's one set. Then I can get two sets. So, I have two left over. So I have two whole sets. And since I have two left over, I have two and two fifths. Well, if I wanted to have three sets, how many more circles would I need? I would need to have three more circles. And that would give me another set. Then I would have three sets. Okay? So, instead of having a fraction left, I would have three whole sets. And uh, I find that sometimes if you want to really work with your fractions, and, uh, you can use rocks, you can use acorn, pecans, just anything to represent. And that way, you'll get used to... Uh, devising sets. And and remember, sometimes, uh, I don't know if there are any teachers looking at my podcast, but if you're having trouble with a child, even in fourth or fifth grade, it could be because that child missed something in kindergarten. The child, if a child is having a problem with division and with uh, fractions, a lot of times it stems from them missing out and not really understanding sets mm. back in, in kindergarten. So uh, you're better off taking the child back, even if it's a fifth grader, if you can take the child back and help the child find out what he's deficient in so that he can move on. That's better than having him sit around and wonder or feel lost. Uh, also, I found that children do a good job of teaching children. So, if you have, I said, unless you have most of your children understanding what you're teaching, you should you should go back. If 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 at least uh, 70, 60 percent of your students, if they're not with you, then you've missed something. Or maybe the teacher ahead of you missed something. So you do well to take the child back and have the child have a better understanding. And that's why I like teaching in groups. I never, ever set my class up in rows. I always set my class up in groups. And I don't believe in setting a class up with what I call the advanced group here, the slow group there. No. Every group should have a child that understands. You might have a child that understands math in your group, in one group. You might have one that understands reading. You might have one that understands science, history. Whatever, you want to have a, a versatile group. And I'm going to talk later on, too, about how you can improve reading skills. Because everything relates to reading. It's all comprehension. And back to this, remember this 
we've divided into 32 parts, but we really can go for 64 parts. You fold this paper one more time, and each square would be worth 64. So each square would be 1 64th. And if you uh, come across my podcast and you're having some trouble with sets and with fraction and division, uh, you know, let me know. And I'd love to do a session. Uh, I'm also, once the uh, pandemic is over, uh, I'll respond to invitations too. So uh, let's stick with me and let's see. Uh, this is not just for children. This will help you to become sharper or it will help you to review. And like I said earlier, everybody can do it. We can all improve. We can all improve. So let's work on our skills and improve our, ourselves. And while we improve ourselves, help our children. And I'll see you the next time.